Hey, Xavier here at Microchip. Welcome to Chip Tutorial. Today, we are diving into the Trust Platform Design Suite and the public key rotation use case. So now imagine you have a piece of firmware that you sign with a private key and you push this image into your cloud, into your microcontroller. And your microcontroller is equipped with connectivity and any C608 is the Trust Flex or Trust Custom. Why? Because that's where your public key is. The public key is the, has a mathematical relationship to the private key that was used to sign. And now you wonder, okay, why would I use public key rotation? So without public key rotation, what's happening, you have a single asymmetry key pair for every firmware image, which is super common today in the, uh, in the embedded industry. And similarly, you have a single asymmetry key pair for all the users. You can't distinguish firmware versions or users with cryptographic keys right now, if you, if you do that. Which, to some extent, can be okay, right? But look at the benefits of using a, key, a public key rotation use case. Now you have a single key pair for each uh, firmware version, or you have a single key pair for each users here. So now you can distinguish users of firmware. Again, there are other use cases that you can benefit from using a polyky rotation. So let's look at what, how it works really at the high level. So you have a parent set of an asymmetry key pair, private and public keys. You're gonna take the parent public keys and load it into the 608, okay? That's done during uh, manufacturing, during the, sec the secure key provisioning. And you lock that key. Now you have the concept of a child key. So you're gonna have a child public key, and very soon we're gonna talk about the child private key. So the child public key here will need to be signed by the parent private key, and now you have a signed child public key. That signed child public key, you also load it into the 608. So now you have that parent public key, that child public key. So you have two key pairs, two public keys inside your 608, and we need to connect them to continue to connect them together. So we signed them. So we started the connection, the cryptographic connect binding, I would say. Uh, now what we want to do is verify by the parent key that the child is legitimate, meaning signed by the parent private key. So you run the DC to verify inside the 608 once it's acknowledged. Then you can start playing around with the private key of the child and use it to sign your firmware. Then you push this firmware into your microcontroller that sits right next to the 608 there. And then you got to verify that the firmware is legitimate. We are going to use a couple of tools right now. We're going to use the Trust Platform Design Suite, MPLab, a laptop, and the Crypto Authentication Platform Development Kit. The DM320118 contains an ECC 608 Trust Angle, a Trust Flex, and a Trust Custom. Today, we are focusing on the Trust Flex. It also comes with a Microbus uh, header from Microelectronica for you to be able to add other type of sensors or connectivities that Microelectronica provides. You also have an onboard debugger here and the USB hub to allow the TPDS to talk via USB into the microcontroller. As you open the Trust Platform Design Suite, you'll be welcome on this page, but without further ado, we click on Use Cases, and in Use Cases, we're gonna look for uh, public key, secure public key rotation, which I'm selecting. As I select that, I'm also need to deselect the device I'm gonna work on, that's my 608. As I click here, there's a tab on the left, I preloaded it, uh, before starting the recording. But go to this tab here, and the bottom of, at the top of this page here, you'll have an introduction about the, the use case. You'll have this, uh, it's a drop down menu, so if it's not drop down, just click on that. You'll find out that we are showing you the, the 16 slots of the 608. Uh, the slot 13 and 14 is what's highlighted, that's what we'll be tapping on. It also gives you the five step that we'll go through, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. It's all tell you that you have your DM32018 plugged in. And let's get into this transaction diagram that's executable. So if I click on my numbers here, something happened between TPDS and, uh, and the kit. So if I click on number one here, I'm generating the parent public key. I generate the initial validated public key, which I've called the child key in the, um, in the previous slide. And what it's doing, it's 
uh, provisioning the keys. Normally, it's done at microchip factories or in the secure factories via a provisioning service. And it's loading slot 13 and 14 with the parent public key and the child public key. Slot 2 here, what we'll do, it will generate uh, the new key to Roctate and it will send those information, the new public key, the nonce and the signature, the old public key, the nonce and the signature into the embedded system. Slot uh, step three will invalidate the current public key and we're calling on the ATK verify and validate with, from Crypto Athlib. Uh, step four will update and validate the public key. We're using the ATK write public key uh, as well as the ATK verify validate. And step five, we're verifying the new public key. And here's the corresponding function here. So what we've done here, we've pretty much executed what I've showed into the, the transaction diagram in the previous slide. We don't stop here. We provide you also the C code example uh, from MP Lab here that's already loaded for you. So if we go directly into the app C, I've scrolled down quite a bit to show you, for example, the right uh, new public key functions uh, is there in the code example. If you scroll down a little bit further, we can find the verify new public key and so forth. So the entire project is there at the tip of your finger when you go to uh, the MPLab project. In the learn button, you'll find the video. The use case help is just a very simple text file that gives you all the step on how to execute a certain use case. And uh, that's all we'll cover. Maybe you can cover this button here too. It's the C source folder. So obviously you click there, you'll be directly pointed to the folder where the C, the C source is. Next, click on conclusion. And it's going to tell you to go to the secret exchange. So I'm going back to my Trust Platform Design Suite main page and go to the secret exchange process. There is a questionnaire for you to fill uh, to tell us about the part number, the project information, because we're creating a project environment for, for, your, uh, for your TrustFlex projects here. You'll have to save the, the data and share them in a Salesforce ticket. And everything is explained here, right? The process, the provisioning process starts by submitting a technical support case. It's a Salesforce ticket, essentially, on the microchip technical portal. So start there. Give the answer to the questionnaire there. Read those guidance. Everything is, is discussed here. Where we're taking you after is in the configurator, per se. So there, you're going to uh, select your uh, 608 TrustFlex. And I've already loaded my configurator here. Um, I'm going to select again my public key rotation, which is right here. And what it's doing, if I scroll down, I have my SQRC interface that's selected. It tells me that slot uh, 13 and 14 are slots I'm going to be working on. So right here, what I'm going to do for the sake of the example, I'm going to enter the de uh, decimal data. CCDD, and I'm going to copy that because we're expecting essentially uh, 64 bytes. Let's see if I've got my 64 bytes here. If I'm missing a little bit, yep, I'm missing a little bit. Uh, let's add a few more. I think I'm probably missing a little bit more. Yep. Up, uh, tuck. And see, I've got all my um, my string of character of the expected length. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this here my 64 bytes for the parent public key, and I'm going to load that into the child public key, the validated public key, and make it a little bit different here by changing the last two actor to AA, for example. Uh, let's change that to EE, rather. If I verify my chain of character, it's expecting uh, what it's expecting, the 64 byte. So it should be ready there. A couple of more information. We can have the custom part number that will be give you, given to you in the Salesforce ticket. So let's say I'm going to call that uh, test for the sake of the example. Now, we're almost at the end of uh, the, ex the tutorial. We have three buttons. The first one, let's read together. The prototype package is for prototyping and learning online. Let me highlight this portion here. Do not share the prototype package because secret are in plain text. So it's just a way for us to teach you what's happening and what is in the actual encrypted package that you'll be delivering to us. So if you click there, what will happen? It generates a zip file that's in my download folder that I'll go fetch in the next step when I provision the actual sample. So when I click prototype provision, uh, a window is going to show up. It's going to go. It's going to tell me, hey, go back to download and TPS download. I'm going to have my uh, my test proto right. And open this up and boom, what's happening? I don't want any, any key there because I don't have them. I'm still prototyping. So I'm going to let click no and let TPDS generate the sending keys for me. And it tells me my prototype board is provisioned is in, and completed. The last step, so you're done with provisioning at that, stand, at that point. 
The last step here is to click on Generate Encrypted Provision Package. And let's read this together again. Click here to generate the secret exchange package when then upload it to the microchip provisioning service through the microchip technical support portal. So that's your Salesforce ticket. You will be prompted to add the HSM encryption key when starting the generation process. So those two steps, basically what's going to be combined here, uh, and will give you 20 verification units out of this process. So that's where your encryption key that you obtained through the Salesforce tickets come and get loaded in. You'll have uh, the CSR zip and the CA key if optional. When you click OK, essentially the utility gives you a, 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 zip, fi a zip file that you load in a secret pack package. And again, will deliver you uh, 20 verification units, and you'll be able to uh, test them and validate them and complete the process that way. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the Trust Platform Design Suite and the Public Key Rotation use case. Make sure to go to microchip.com/trustplatform and download the TPDS. And we'll see you in the next use case.